to start Wind Down Wednesday with your hosts, Missy, Don, Angie, TJ, Nikki, and Lindsay. So grab your glass or your cup and join us for great conversations about, well, <laughs> who knows? Let's just enjoy the evening. Here we go. Good evening, family, and welcome to Wind Down Wednesday. Tonight's um, edition is live. It is not a pre-record. Um, thank you to those that watched the pre-record on last week. Um, we got some um, interesting emails um, for some of you that were not able to watch it the first time. You were able to watch it the second as a rewind. So thank you so very much. You will see my co-host slowly um, coming on screen. We are having some familiar faces in the building tonight. I am Melissa Davis. I go by Missy. I am the operator of Hands of Melody Doula Services. We are a doula company. We do a lot of stuff, y'all. But at the base of it all, we are birth doulas and postpartum doulas. So if you are looking for support and you are pregnant um, or in the first two years of your baby's life and you need support and help and suggestions, somebody uh, just a shoulder to cry on, we are here to help. You can email us at hello at melodichands.com and we will be more than happy, happy to respond to you. So joining me tonight on screen, you will see Angie, Nikki, TJ, and Cherie. So ladies, whenever you feel um, able to, you can pop in and say hi to everyone. Um, tonight's show is going to be a little more of a laid back show. Um, it's the DIY episode. So everybody is DIY everything, do it yourself, everything, um, because things are so expensive, like so expensive. Like I didn't even realize how much inflation was hitting us until I started watching these grocery prices. Something that I bought last week, no, two weeks ago, um, I bought something, it was like 14 bucks. And I went back two days ago to get the same thing. It was $17. I was like, come on, y'all, like three days in a week. I mean, $3 in a week, what are we doing? So stuff is getting really, really expensive. So tonight epi tonight's episode, we're gonna kind of talk about a couple of things. Um, some party suggestions, um, some food suggestions, learning activities for the littles, self-care, and Cherie is here to do our travel segment, um, Cherie's do and don't list. Um, so we get an approved list. <laughs> I call it our approval list from Cherie. She'd be like, nope, don't do it, or I 100% recommend. So she's going to talk to us a little bit now that she's back from her um, travel experience with her little in just a little bit. Um, so we're going to start with a couple of things, um, just a couple of tips for those of you that have littles that are going to be home and you're going to be educating um, or even back to school, like back to school. Have y'all seen the back to school list for, for some of these teachers? It is like read eight boxes of tissues. Eight, like, come on, what we doing? Five rolls of tape, four packs of pencils. I'm sorry. I, I, per student? Per student. Per student. So, so I have a, I've been hearing about this. Mm -hmm. And what I've been hearing that has been happening, at least with the younger kids, is that you come to school with this big box of really nice supplies that your mom and dad just bought you. And then the teacher takes everything, puts everything in the pile. And then your kid might end up with some Walmart stuff. Well, maybe another kid ends up with something that you purchased. So what one woman said that she did in order to make sure that wasn't going to happen to her child this year was she got everything that the teacher asked for, everything, but she found a woman on SD and she personalized everything. She said there was not a single supply that came to school for her child that wasn't personalized. She said the teacher was heated. Yes. He did yeah. like, can't you go and take this back and get something not personalized? And she was like, no, she likes the personalization. It's not going to make it not work. Why and, and because she would take them together. She put everything. No, in no, no. Pile. I'm saying she, the teacher asked her because she gets the, I mean, why would I? Like, I. Right, exactly. I, she was like, that's my, my kid stuff. Thanks. And my thing with that though is I got to add something to this because 
Okay, so if we are going to do that group, like all the kids, uh, let's let's do it. Like, be honest about that. Like, just say, and I would really love, I'm going to ask my friend who, my really good friend who's a teacher, I'm going to ask her about that because she teaches elementary school. And I want to know, like, won't you guys just say, hey, you are required to do this, but understand that your stuff will be shared so we can all buy appropriately. Like, I'm not going to buy the, like, fancy is kleenex or whatever you know i'm not gonna yeah. buy the fancy stuff right. that stuff i'll keep at home you know i'll buy as you said the walmart brand you know and, and just be okay with it because it's going to be the community stuff um i don't understand why they do that well i, I was think also told that it was because they are trying to get supplies enough to cover for those that can't so everybody's not going to come to school with all their supplies and so there's enough to kind of share with the students that are lacking. Tell me that too. Listen. Yeah, be honest about yeah, it. Or so, just say, yeah. here, you can you can either buy the list or you can just I send your child to school with $10 or tw a 20 and, and the teacher will get it. Or you know what I mean? Like, mm -hmm. give me the option to, to, you know, instead of saying your child needs this stuff, my child doesn't need it. Other children need it. And that's fine because I'm going to do my community work and and that's fine right but be honest and give me the option to like just give you a twenty dollar or thirty dollars because inflation oh yeah. and so you can get that stuff it's like a lot it's i'm i don't know and and as a, a former like i did like the low like kindergarten and pre-k and maybe because i was in a private school we didn't have some of the same things then but I mean, come on, like paper, it was everything, paper towels, um, everything. Be, and I guess because the schools are not really supplying. And I know they're teaching. Hats off to all the teachers that are coming out of pocket. And, and they and, do. And, and, and they, they do. supplying these classrooms. Like my hat's off to you. You should not have to. There's yeah. no reason that you should have to come out of pocket. Out of pocket. Or you're working, supplies. you're not supposed to be get paying. They taking taxes out of out of my money every year to fund these schools. There is no reason that the classroom should not be fully supplied. But I am in agreement with um, no. It's, she shouldn't have to take because they don't pay y'all enough anyway. So that's that's off gate. They don't pay y'all enough anyway. And no, you shouldn't have to take money to put supplies into your classroom. But I would be more apt, like Cherie said, if you sent home a list. Listen. This year, student population, we are not going to have enough supplies to cover the entire classroom. Is there anyone willing to send in rolls of paper towels, boxes of tissues, boxes of pencils, like all of that stuff? Then you're going to get maybe it's just five or six moms that's going to go to Walmart, fill up their cart and send it in. But for the average person that may not be able to afford eight boxes, you're requiring all of us to take up the slack. And I think it's not fair because you're going to have people that can't. I might not be able to send eight, but I can send four. Now I'm feeling like I'm not giving my child everything they need when honestly, all, all that was for them was four and the other bo four boxes is surplus. Please say that to me. So I, I don't mind. I don't I'll mind. I don't mind classroom boosting. I've made that perfectly clear. Now that Stephen's on his second teacher, I've made it perfectly clear to both his teachers. Tell me what you need. I will go to the store and get it today. Mm -hmm. I don't care who it's for because what I do understand is that my child is in that classroom. Yeah. And and the the better the classroom setup is, the better my child learns mm -hmm. and has a good time. And so there's there's it's doubtful that there's any supply that a teacher could ever ask for that she's no, not going to use get. with my kid. Yes. But and that's if you're going to use kid. it with my kid, I don't have a problem buying it. But so somebody like, else's you know, kid not. And now granted, when I was in high school, I'm going to date myself. Packs of notebook paper was like 50 cent. You go to Walmart and get a pack of notebook paper for like 50 cent. It's not like 50 cent. It's not. It's not. Cent. No, uh -uh, it wasn't 15 cent. It was that was on the sale, North Carolina country sale. prices. But in Baltimore, because they knew we was broke, okay. it was 50 cent a pack. Now I'm offended when I go to Walmart and it's like 85 cent, like that 35 cent mean a whole lot to me, it does. but 
But if you need a couple of extra packs of paper at the classroom for somebody who might not have it, I'll grab it. But not don't make me think it's for my kid. Because like you said, it's going into the supply cabinet. And I know all the notebook paper that I bought was lined in blue lines. And why are they coming home with the ones lined in red? That's not what I bought. So say, tell me why we doing this. Tell me, tell me what we doing. No, I agree. Because I mean, and, and, and especially because I like to personalize his stuff regardless. That's true. That's I, I like, you know what I'm saying? So, so if you tell me in advance that you need supplies for the classroom, then I'm going to buy you a separate bag. And, yes, and I'm going to send him in with the stuff that's general, because more than likely, I am going to get him personalized notebooks. I am going to get yes. him personalized stuff. It's going to be what he likes. Like right it's now, we I mean, don't it's get it twisted. My kid likes trucks and Pottery Barn sells a truck book bag, Hot, Hill, um, Hot Wheels Monster, and it's personalized with his name on it. I, on sale. You said Pottery Barn, so you lost some of us anyway, because that's it's on sale. You right got to get it. You got to get it right at the beginning of the Ooh, year. That's bougie day. money. Mm hmm. That's, oh, it's that's, not as much as you think. It's it's the price of a regular book bag. I, know, I carry She should have said crate and barrel. Crate? No, no. Well, they have have, kids. have you not seen these beautiful? Okay, look, pro tip. Go check out the children's book bags at Pottery Barn, and you're going to be like, oh, my God, I'm mad I missed that sale. Especially when you go um, check the price of a regular Jan Sport, and then go look at it at Pottery Barn. Hmm? Or, or you can just get a cricket and personalize the book bag along with everything else. Thing, well, that's why we got Angie. Speaking of which, my girl is just going to teach me how to use that. that so you're going to have to teach me how to use that because I, I Angie, don't. Angie, let me just I uh, put an order that. in with you, okay? Like, <laughs> that's, <laughs> thing, that's what I'm talking about. Or you can find somebody that know how to do them and make them yourself. Um, we we change the topics, but Angie, my girls need new shirts with their names on the back. I'm just throwing that in there. However, um, that was just me. So let's talk about learning, talk, since we're talking about the classroom. A couple of tips, um, and ladies, feel free, for the toddler mom that is at home wanting to educate um, and make little things at the house for your little people. Um, you can take construction paper, preferably not white, any other color but white. You can give them Q-tips and water, little small thing of water, they can dip the Q-tip and they can write on the construction paper. It's just water. It shows up. If it spills, it's no big deal. If it gets on your table, it's no big deal. It dries, no big deal. So Q-tips you probably already have because they don't smell, sell small things except for the little teeny travel case. It's always like a thousand Q-tips. They're not expensive. You can buy Q-tips. They can go through as many as they want. You can go to the dollar store and get construction paper. So you, I mean, you can, it's, the, it's a decent sized pack of construction paper, or you can go to Walmart and get a, get triple that stack that you get at the dollar store, but cheap. And that is a way for your little people to color and all of that kind of stuff. For those that have kids in school and they doing math facts from a person who erased a lot. Because that's how me and Matt get along. I don't get it. Um, it's a little bit more pricier than paper. But if you get the ones that you can erase, the little um, Crayola tablet things that you push the button and erase, it. you can, and I'll, and I'll pull one up on Amazon, but get that for a child that's learning. Um, and then they can do, work out the whole problem because this whole math teacher want to see your work. They can fully work the problem out on this erasable board and then they can put it on their paper because after a while that paper is going to tear they going through pencils they going through erasers for all of this stuff when they're at home and they're doing their homework get the erasable tablet let them work everything out and then put it on their paper that way they don't have to because you hate messy writing just like I hate messy writing and after the first time erasing I'm making you ball it up and throw it away that's wasted money so if you work it out, then they put in the correct answer on the paper and it's less that you are going through as far as education. So that's my tip. Anybody else got a tip while we on the education piece? Um, I want to go ahead to me. Um, one of the things that I like to do when um, 
we all know that children, when you're dealing with like, you know, crayons, bright markers, whatever, they can be a little destructive. And so I don't want to say we go through crayons. I'm just going to say that his crayons have a short lifespan. Um, so um, that can get expensive really quickly. And so what I've learned is that I look for alternative locations to purchase my crayons. I don't go to name brand, name brand stores. Um, I get, and I don't get Cray Crayola for anything except for special events. I spend less than $2 a pack for a pack of crayons and I use off brand places like WB Mason. They will deliver to your house if you're in there, oh. what you call it. And so for a one pack is less than $2. So I can get like a whole pack for less than 20 and if I really not that I normally do but if I really needed to and I'd usually get like four or five packs at the time if he breaks something destroys it he drops it the dogs get it and I can't let him He's play with anymore mm -hmm. I have another pack right there and I've spent less than two dollars a thing and then um it's just right there it's ready oh teachers paying teachers is a great place to get worksheets and coloring pages for basically almost free I think I spent two dollars for 30 plus pages of coloring just blank coloring pages they have tons of stuff you don't have to spend much more than a couple of dollars it's already pre-priced you just look for what you're looking for and you can print it out and you, you get the file download so now any point in time he says he wants to color trucks i got 30 different images to choose from i just got to print them out what's it called again teachers paying teachers teachers paying teachers okay and this was i want to show you all this was the tablet that I was talking about and they can draw as much as they want and then hit the trash can button and I enlarged it so you can see it but it's literally $5.99 on Amazon that's nice yeah so $5.99 on Amazon and you're not wasting paper and balling it up and drawing it away so that's a way to save my uh, paper pencils all of that um, you can show them teach them and erase it without them having to go through so much, um, so much paper. So that's that's a, a tip. I got just one more tip. Say. Go ahead. No, go ahead. Um, so my kid, you know, I'm trying to do worksheets. Um, and these are, these are things I already had. So other people, your miles may vary. Um, I already have a um, a laminator. I bought a little cheap one from Amazon of like $20 and laminating packets. So mm -hmm. I bought him a workbook that with the rip out pages. And instead of just letting him rip up the workbook, I've been laminating the pages. So I rip it out the book, I laminate it and I give him a dry erase marker already had those around the house. And he, da -da 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 -da. I wipe it off and put it back in the, uh, <laughs> the book cost me $5. Yeah. <laughs> and it has like, 300 plus pages we're going to be at this for a minute and eventually once I get the whole thing laminated as he goes through the whole book I'm going to spiralize it at Staples for less than three dollars and he's going to use it again next year and it works and you can get if you catch a laminator especially like Best Buy Walmart they have them on sale um so buying a laminator is not expensive at all so that's that's a really good tip too and with dry erase you wipe it off, you can buy the, um, just get you a paper towel and a little bit of alcohol and clean it off really well, um, which is why I got this big giant calendar next to me because it's dry erase. I wipe it off and keep it moving. And if anybody is anti-dry erase smell, they do make, because um, I know them dry erase markers can be kind of strong sometimes. They do make dry erase crayons because I got some for Christmas for Rory. So Do they? Yeah, they do. Because her table that we got her for Christmas is the tabletop is dry erase. Yeah, so we have one of those dry too. erase crayons that she uses on her tabletop. And we are, it colors on paper too. So I feel good when she's doing coloring with the dry erase crayons on the paper and it gets on the table. I know all I got to do is wipe it off and I don't have to like scrub it like I would regular crayons. So does she yeah, write I on the walls with it? No. So it, it doesn't transfer on the walls if she does? I mean, she doesn't write on the walls with a crayon uh. because she'll get a mud hole snatched in her. But um, <laughs> if she was left to her own devices like she was today, my my living room, we have a our, our coat closet. The front of it is mirrors. If you, I don't think any, well, Melissa's been in the house. It's four panel mirror. And my husband was on the phone. And... Uh-oh, Angie freezing on us. 
Uh oh, Angie. No, she's not for me. No, she's oh, I was about to say I I'm not frozen. I see me moving. I think. Okay, that must have been me. It's yeah, a, so she's it's a cow there. must have walked up the street. I'm sorry. <laughs> she she got into the mirror today. So yeah, if you're not watching her, yeah, they they'll go for it. That's where okay. those, even though this is not technically a DIY, but that's where those um, what are they called? Magic free magic. The magic eraser. Not the magic eraser, the crayon, the, the Crayola markers that only color on that certain oh, yeah. page. Oh, that's what you're talking about. Oh, yeah. okay. That's where those come in handy because you can write anywhere in the world. It's not going to show up. You can only, it'll only show up on that paper. So that's I what need him, we have. I need those to him some of those. And thank you for that dry erase crayon tip. I didn't even know those existed. And they mm -hmm. are now officially in my cart. Appreciate yes. it. <laughs> Yes, yeah. and for your toddlers, our toddler table has one side whiteboard, one side um, uh, chalk, like the chalkboard, mm -hmm. so we can switch it over so that they can they can write on it. So I saw a D. I was looking, of course, getting ready for tonight, looking for um, some DIY tips, and it was a lady that like put paper like on the wall so that her little person can. I was like, mm -mm, cause they ain't always mm -hmm. gonna be a piece mm -hmm. of paper there. And they're going to be in somebody else's house or you're not going to be around. And then you can't get mad because they wrote on the walls because at the house you said they can write on the wall. So mm -hmm. don't yeah. even make that up. Don't even make that a habit. Yeah, I, so. I took a, a wall. Well, it's not a wall technically. My pantry, the whole side of the pantry, I chalkboard painted it from top to bottom. So Rory has a huge chalk. Like the top, I have like her little menu for the week or whatever. And then the, you are just the bottom. I know, half. I know, right? Isn't it just sickening, Sheree? That's just my kidnapper. I'm going on mute. <laughs> Drop her off. We have that. that. That's what tonight is for the DIY. Yeah. We, we have, have that. that. Angie, and I, and every, and literally every room. time Angie opens her mouth, whether it's yeah. on I know, our, our I know, chat, I know. whether it's yeah. on our day chat, whatever we are exposed to Mother Rouse, she always is talking about something else she didn't did. I yeah. mean, well, she done found I something. I did that. <laughs> we did. We have the, what's the closets that open? Open like this because xylophone looking the accordion. Yeah. The accordion. The accordion. that's what it's called those so i painted my <laughs> son my son's whole closet doors are that so and he's in high school so when he's in his room and he's trying to do his homework he can actually on his closet like work the problems out so that's where cool. he can see them mm -hmm. so you can do that and then in Manaya's room right next to her desk like a whole half a wall so she could like put right stuff on. on it so that's that's you just got to be careful though because your child has to know when they can and can't write yeah. on on something so um wait, other, wait, before we forget can we can we can we corner Angie about her beautiful amazing hair caddy can we corner her about that are we there not yet, yet. no no okay, we okay. education Tamila don't okay, do it okay we I just want, we brought her up and I know I, I, I'm looking at the time I was like I don't want to uh-uh uh, I, I, I wanted to Angie show honestly I want to um I want to <laughs> that's a good to idea Sheree another, all things um, Angie <laughs> toddler oh, toy all for those things, all things that are you. staying home um water bottles of any <laughs> sort how you can um like sensory toys out of water bottles now you can now as a former teacher let me tell you you can use a regular like this bottle you absolutely can but after a while they do this and they get like real crunchy or whatever um not suggesting anybody buys bougie water but boss has a really nice water bottle that you can just buy a couple for that purpose only to drink the water and then use those bottles so it is not so like crunchy crunchy but i want to show you um a really short two minute video on what you can Are do they plastic uh -huh. most of the vast box okay yeah, so you it's can not get glass. plastic and you can get um the glass ones glass? i love the glass ones for me but of course i have to recycle those but the plastic ones just for the girls um and i found um this that i wanted to show you because we've actually done this in the classroom but this is good if you have toddlers or if you have a child with um sensory issues so i just wanted to show this real quick um that you could do with those water bottles Hi, so this week we made these super cool sensory water bottles that require no prep except drink water and are one of the few activities that both my big kids and baby can enjoy 
So first up, we have these awesome glitter bottles. You'll just start with water and then add glitter. It works best to use a combo of fine and chunkier glitter. Oh, okay. As long as it actually goes in the bottle. Ross is going to kill me. And then you shake it up. Now, I will save you some time and tell you that I tried various syrups and glues and Pinterest recipes, and honestly, it works great with just water. Um, my kids thought so too. Ford was like laying on the floor mesmerized by this. Is that calming you down, Ford? I've never seen him so calm. I can see why people actually use this as a timeout tool. Is he all coming down? Yeah. Next up, we have these oil and water bottles. This is actually my favorite. You start with water, add a few drops of liquid watercolor, add in your oil. I like mineral or baby oil because it's clear. And then you twist and turn it. And this is so oddly relaxing because the color only adheres to the water, not the oil. And so you have this really, really cool separation. So you can leave it at this, but of course, if you remember Brooke's science episode, we had to try the Alka-Seltzer tablets, and my kids went absolutely crazy for this. Yeah, we do it again. You want to do it again? Yeah. And then finally, Tess and I made a party in a bottle. It's a party. <laughs> and really, you can put anything in this. Little mini pom-poms, twisted pipe cleaners, and cut up ribbon. And especially with babies, make sure to use hot glue on these if you're worried about them opening. And then Tess loved this, and it's such a great free toy for babies. <gasps> can you roll? Can you roll? <laughs> All right, guys, I hope you try this. If you So, those are easy to do. Um, yeah, those are cute. My my little ones know how to take the tops off water bottles now, so we definitely have to hot glue them closed. Um, she put the hot glue on the outside around. I would suggest that you put the hot glue inside the bottle top and then do it so that, because um, anybody knows anything about hot glue, when it dries, you can peel it. Peel it off. Like you can peel it off. So this way it's inside. And then if there's any excess, you can peel that off and it's still on inside of the cap. But that's really good for, um, she used it for a timeout tool. So I guess you can, for a smaller person, you could shake it up and then you tell them, well, you have to sit here until all the sparkles kind of fall to the bottom. It gives them something to look at, to kind of focus on, kind of as a calming tool. So that is really a good um instead of a timer that you're waiting for to beat, because I'm sorry for a two-year-old that you're trying to put in time out. I don't know how they're supposed to just sit still and do nothing, but if they know that they're watching for the sparkles to fall to the bottom, that could really be, um, you know, kind of a, not even a timeout, but a calm down. Let's calm down. Let's watch all the glitter fall. Um, so those are really good. Um, you could do them in all different colors um, so that they can have ones that sparkle, then you can kind of sort or you can have ones that if the ones that have something inside, let's put those over here and the ones that don't. So it's as sorting tools, colors, whatever it is, now you've got multiple activities with these bottles. And like you can see, again, after a while, the pressure in these, if you keep messing with these, I just don't see that that will work as well. I know people have used them, but I also know they throw them away after a while. Whereas a harder bottle, um, will last longer. So that's, that's another DIY. Yep. Um, so Steven's teacher made some of those and mm -hmm. I think I sent a picture to Mother Rouse. Um, and she used Gatorade bottles, a lot of them, okay. but they're really tough too. Oh, yeah. Yeah, and, um, then she sets them up and lets them, um, play, uh, kickball. Oh. oh, kickball. Kickball, dodgeball. <laughs> well, not dodgeball, kickball, because they're not kicking it at each other so it's kickball right right yeah oh. that's when you kick it so yeah so she puts like or 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 baby bowling so they get to go and push the ball See? or whatever they can do and she'll activities. have like four or five of them yeah mm -hmm. set up lots of activities um with that that one thing and then the last one because i'm trying to think of sensory stuff too for little ones that get overexcited or need to calm. I was telling Nick about this last one and then we're gonna move on to, um, to I wanna get um, a food one in Angie so you can be ready. Um, I saw one where a lady used food coloring in different bags of rice. She mixed it to make the rice different colors and then she poured it and let it dry. Mm -hmm. Then she put combined all the rice into one of those little totes that had the little gray lids you can close and um she would hide 
the bigger puzzle pieces for a toddler under all of the rice, sit it on the table. She would lay out like three puzzles where all the pieces were hidden. And then they had to kind of dig around, find the puzzle piece and then find the corresponding board that it went on to. And she suggested that you only do two or three at a time. So you're talking maybe four pieces per puzzle. You got like 12 pieces hidden. So now they're finding, they're sorting, they're matching all of that at the table and it's rice. So anything that goes in little mouths, it's just rice with food coloring. But I thought that was really a, um, mm -hmm. a great idea for, for little littles and sensory. So um, anybody else with the education piece? Oh, we did, I did the three little bears. Mm -hmm. So um, I got the story, you know, I have to like a big book of nursery rhymes. So I got the story and I read him, um, the re I read him the story and then we did the whole little big book, you know, whatever. And so I did like a whole little thing that after that. So after the three little bears, um, I have, um, I think they're thrown away now. I made some brown paint by mixing up some other random colors together. And I had him make paint the some cups so he can make some porridge for his bears. And then we did... Um, stomping and so this is all just on the same story so then we did stomping like like walking and talking like the each three bear so like you'll say oh I'm you know papa bear have the deep voice mama bear have the light voice baby voice whatever and then the stomp and maybe you know papa bear might stomp and mama bear might walk fast or maybe you know so we did that yeah. so we would just kind of all around the story okay mm -hmm. that's a real good one too that's that mm -hmm. and it helps with memory and mm -hmm you know, different, small, medium, large, mommy, mm -hmm. daddy relationship, you know, household. So that's a real good one too. So thank you to me. Um, I want to give Angie um, an opportunity to jump in with a DIY, like food thing. Okay. I'm going to go very quickly. Hopefully <laughs> I don't get crucified halfway through. Okay. So, um, Real quick, so uh, number one, infant-wise, or when you're transitioning to um, purees and things like that, we talk about it all the time on here. Um, pureeing your own food. Um, one of the way, one of the things that I did, and many other uh, mommies in the group did, was the infantino system um, with the pouches. So, however you choose, they have machines where it can steam your your food and blend it in the same one or whatever, whatever you have, make it work for you. Or whatever you have, make it work for you. Me personally, I steamed my food and I blended it in my Ninja and then I poured it in the pouches. Um, what I will suggest about doing purees is um, don't try to mix a cup, a whole bunch of things, because if your tot doesn't like them mixed, then you have wasted your carrots, potatoes, and green beans, whatever you did. So what I personally did, I would make a batch of one thing. So I would make a big batch of carrots, a big batch of green beans, a big batch of black beans, whatever it was, and I made them separate and I would then mix them together. So I had the frozen pod, hold silicone molds, and I would freeze them individually in those molds. And when I was ready to try to do things together I mix it at that point so I would just pull out one pod of black beans or two pods of this and mix it together like that because I learned the hard way because I made this amazing recipe that I found online it had lentils and all this other kind of stuff in it mixed all of it up it had 20 pouches in the freezer ready to go hated it <laughs> so hated it so I was like yeah I'm not doing it again because that not only did I waste the pouches but I wasted all of those individual ingredients because I mixed them I meshed them all in one so that's a puree tip so DIY um, purees are good for many different reasons cost saving um, as well as you know what you are giving your child and you're not getting just random pouches off of the shelf not knowing if it's mold on the inside yes all of the extra preservatives that or whatever the additives and all of that stuff that they have in the pouches. So that's one thing that we did do in our house. Um, toddler wise, um, because my child 
does not really care too much for when I'm not, I'm not going to talk about that one yet, but I do her pancakes. Um, when I, she, ironically, she likes the frozen pancakes, but when I can, I do make ahead her pancakes and I put them in the freezer. So, um, as well as French toast, I put that in the freezer. So she's, she gets a home cooked breakfast every morning. Um, because I've made ahead of that stuff and I put it in the freezer. So like, Typically on the weekends, I cook big, big breakfasts. So that's my opportunity to make extra pancakes or extra French toast or whatever it is. Cool it down, slice it up, put it in the freezer so that when my husband is home during the week, he can easily pop out and put something in the oven for her for breakfast. Um, another tip is with eggs. Take her eggs, mix it up, add my cheese, my spinach, um, salt and pepper, whatever I know she likes in it, and pretty much make like a frittata, for lack of better words and cut them up in little squares as well and pop them in the freezer and you're able to easily um you know pull that out so you don't feel guilty with and this is not to make anybody feel guilty but you know giving them something sugary or sweet um in the morning they'll get a home cooked meal you can pull out those things and just pop them in the oven or pop them in the microwave um most recently one of our other mommies Sheenan in the group hit me to spinach pancakes. I was on Pinterest doing the spinach pancakes from scratch that tastes like rubber something. Mm -hmm. And I'm just like, I wouldn't even eat this. Why am I giving it to my child? And she was like, no, I mix my son's pancakes. I use the Auntie Mama uh, pancake mix. I put spinach in it and I mix it together. Baby, <laughs> I tried it two Saturdays ago. Roy asked for the green pancakes now. She has what? no idea that she is eating at mm. least two servings of vegetables for breakfast. So I'm very happy with that. And the only thing I did different because I'm me and I do what I do. I don't follow the pancake recipe to the T. I mix my water in until the ancestors tell me that's enough water. So <laughs> I just made me some spinach water with my ninja, which all I did was took a handful of spinach out of the freezer because I keep I'm gonna get to that in a minute, but I keep spinach in my freezer. So I took a handful of spinach out the freezer, put some water in it, mix it in a ninja and made spinach water. And then I mixed it in the pancake mix, made the pancakes as I normally would. And she crushed them and she asked for green pancakes now. So that's another uh, food tip. DIY, doing it yourself. You got the, the vegetables in there and they still get the best of both worlds because she's got her syrup too on her pancakes. The last thing I'm going to share is that my child struggles with vegetables, as I was just saying. So as most children do, um, once they get to a certain age, because she crushed them when she was a baby, but she became a toddler and was like anti-veggie. So um, another thing that I do to make sure she gets her vegetables is that we make, we make smoothies in our house, whether it's all fruit, whether we're adding spinach or we're adding kale or what, what have you, we make her a spinach at least probably every day honestly now because my husband knows how to make them now so she gets the spinach every day I mean she gets a smoothie every day but what I now do is when she has that little bit of smoothie left in there that she won't finish or she's full or whatever I bought popsicle molds and I pour the leftover smoothie in the popsicle mold and put it in the freezer so whereas my child thinks she is enjoying some fattening ice cream she is having a spinach popsicle for snack and is enjoying it and has no idea that she's helping mommy get vegetables in her. So um, those are just a couple of my food DIY tips. Um, I hope they bless you. <laughs> they always bless us on Cooking with Angie. I the offering plate. I, you, you always bless us. And I'm, you talked about the smoothie. I did not know. For those of us that have littles that are not gaining enough weight or people complain about the weight, my cousin told me that if you look at the back of the pouches that we buy, they're usually like 60, 65 calories. They actually, Happy Baby actually makes 100 calorie pouches. Mm. So those ones I used to get Stephen. Yeah. So if you can't do it yourself um, and you have to resort to a pouch, which it actually is a lot more convenient to get the ones that you can make yourself yeah. at home so you know how much vegetable whatever but if you just absolutely can't try to get the 100 calorie pouches so that uh, 100 calories to us looks like a little snack in the bag you know they're trying to cut calories and lose weight but for them 100 calories is a big deal when you yeah. have a little 
person that's not taking um, enough in or the doctor's complaining about weight, which they always are. Either they're too big, they're too small. Right. But that's and but and try to be honest, when you're traveling with, with a younger, with a young one, it's it's sometimes easier to travel yeah. with the pre-made pouches than your home food, especially if you don't if you don't go and get the pou- the, the, the the individual pouches and using the glass containers like yeah, like absolutely. But we yeah. we did the same. So I want to transition really quick, and we are going to go to our travel mother. Just we one, are going one to um, one that one super 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 quick last. Go tip. ahead. When you are making the pouches, if you want to add fat, another thing that I learned is if you put like a milk base, like sometimes I use like whole milk yogurt, you can mm-hmm. also use heavy whipping cream in half and half because it adds fat to um, the mix. So just yeah. keep it, keep that. And in. keep that, keep in mind though, if your little person is um, not fully on milk yet, you got to keep that in mind oh, as well. Oh, true. So fact. I, I was hoping mind- that. Was- no, yeah. You, you got to say that stuff. So yeah, be mindful. You're right. You're right. You're right. Be you're right. mindful. Your little person has. <laughs> okay. Has I'm ready for Sheree. I'm ready for Sheree. All right. Here we go. So <laughs> we're going to trans- transition in really quickly to a travel tip, the wonder year with Sheree. Um, Sheree has had the opportunity now on this side of life to travel with her little and so we are excited to hear what she has i feel like we need some intro music come on i know right come on (laughs) all right so y'all know and and the reason why i just want to tell everybody listening or watching later the reason why the ladies are excited about this travel because i think like months leading up to my vacation this is all i could think about and talk about i was so obsessed with like I was actually my anxiety. I have really bad anxiety. It's getting more, I don't know if it's getting more manageable, but I'm getting tools to, to handle it. So <laughs> it's really bad. Um, anyway, um, I have a lot of travel tips. I think it was a successful trip. Um, this was the first time my daughter's name is Gigi. It was the first time she was on a plane ride, first time at the beach, a lot of firsts doing this trip. And I was petrified about the plane ride and also feeding at the resort like how you know anytime I have to feed her and I'm not at home I'm just like oh my god what I don't have the the tools the utensils um (laughs) so it it all worked out well so let me get to it um the first thing I would say and I have my little notebook here this is the exact notebook I would write all of my notes in so this is everything (laughs) um the first thing is the Costco scenario next car seat Um, I believe we have uh, another mommy in our group that is actually on travel now, I believe. And she got this car seat. This is a Sharia approved car seat. It is light. It is nimble. It is easy to install. It still is, is, uh, is, uh, what do you call it? Uh, For the plane, approved for the plane. Um, It's cheap. It's $60 or so at Walmart. It used to be cheaper than that, but you know, inflation got us. Um, the other thing I want to talk about is, and the ladies told me about this maybe months ago, and it stuck to the back of my mind because I'm sorry, this is my first baby. I, I'm not hip to the game. And that's the plastic um uh mat table mats, the placemats for the baby mm-hmm. that stick to the table. My baby, the reason why this is important is because I didn't know what kind of surface the result was going to have. So I didn't want to bring the suction cups. Plus that's room in the suitcase that I didn't have because I'll get to some of the other stuff that I did bring. Um, and the plastic mats worked out perfectly. The people at the resort was like, oh my God, this is nice because we would stick it to the table. We would put her food, you know, down how she likes it. She would sit there and eat and they did have high chairs at the resort. So that was good. And we bought her bib. I brought two bibs. So we would rotate them. I would wash them out in the hotel sink every night. It, it worked great. Also with food, bring snacks, 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 and more snacks, and the snacks that your baby prefer. You want on vacation, it's okay. I got to remind myself, give yourself grace. They eating cheeses, it's okay. They won't die. In fact, they might gain some weight because my baby also needs to gain weight. <laughs> but um, <laughs> but yeah, why are you looking like that, Angie? Grab the mats at Chick-fil-A. I, that's, mm. I, what, what, yes. Yes. That's where she got them yeah. from. You, you go yeah. to Chick Fil A. Well, no, I bought, bought some, some at Amazon yeah. because I didn't get a chance to go to to oh. Chick Fil A. But you told me about that. Yeah. And so, um, yeah. So this little disposable uh, mats in the little yep. with the ketchup packs and stuff. You go and you grab some of the mats and you put it on. Yeah. 
and you put it on the table and- so you can pour their french fries out on it now i yeah, know I how you've been inside of chick-fil-a be so long they got max yeah yes Go, keep talking Sherry. i'll find them okay okay, okay the sticky ones uh melissa put me on to that okay i was so in amazement remember when we went to chick-fil-a and you put down that down for the girls i was like what is this mm-hmm. so yes and they work for the resort so approved that's another sharia approved product throw it away you're done you don't have to wash nothing out Next thing I want to talk about is uh, uh, on the plane, make sure you bring something to keep them busy, preferably uh, something they've never seen before. And it goes without saying, you're going to need a tablet. I know we try to uh, minimize screen time for the little, little kids, but you know, you got to do what you got to do unless you just want to be screen, baby screaming. (laughs) <laughs> and so i downloaded from netflix you can download from netflix you can download from disney plus and have their shows and movies on there um i don't endorse the headphones i approve so i won't even tell you what they were because they were garbage um but the the tablet or phone or something that they can view also another rock star item that another mo- mother suggested that I ran out and bought and did not give it to her until we were seated on the plane until she got fussy was that um it's called a what is it the called a Montessori cube. cube. Mm-hmm. Yep. The busy baby um, Montessori cube. You can get it on Amazon. It's inexpensive. That thing kept her quiet for at least a good half hour. I was able to like watch a little bit of the movie I wanted to watch. Like that's how good it was. Um so that's another Sharia proof product. Uh, tablet snack. Okay, so that's it for entertainment. Now, food. I found out that Horizon makes stable, um, stable shelf stable. stable milk. Mm-hmm. I went and bought because my baby, she's put down every night with a big bottle of milk. She likes her milk in the morning. She's she's on whole milk. But they also, I also found out Ripple makes one as well. Uh, Cause another mommy in the group has her baby on ripple and she did that successfully with the ripple milk. Um, so yeah, shelf, shelf stable milk. You bring yourself, I brought bottles um, that lasted every day. Cause I wasn't about to wash out bottle life. I'm uh, that was a bridge too far for me. Also for wait, pause. You said you did what? I brought bottles for every day. So I only was intending to give her a bottle at night and Uh we was only there for four nights, five days. So I bought like five bottles with the shelf stable milk. And you Mm. threw threw it away at the end of the day. No, no, these are my good bottles. These are my nano beads. I ain't throwing them away. I rinsed them out in my suitcase. But you can get them at the dollar store. You can get disposable bottles at the dollar store. So go, go ahead. And I didn't even know about that, Melissa. You held out on me on that. Sorry, but babe. Other thing mm-hmm. I want to talk about real quick is the bathing items. Um, so, yeah. you know, here's the issue. We're at the beach. We're black. Okay. I got to wash my hair. You know, I got to wash her hair. I wasn't allowing my baby to just be in beach water and pool water all day without washing her hair every day. But I, I, I use her baby shampoo. But of course, I use the little um ones you can pour her stuff in instead of bringing the, the big size. I, I made a travel size for her because I couldn't find travel size. I really wanted to buy it. I'm not really a DIY person, as y'all can. Uh, well, buy everything, but um, that's and you didn't amazing. have room in your suitcase. But when you have a baby, those sizes don't apply to you. Remember? Those yes, that's sizes. the other good thing. But Thank I know you, you didn't have room up. anyway. So no, I had a whole suitcase of her stuff. And let me oh, tell you good. what I bought. Reason why I didn't have room because remember the baby's floaty. Okay, gotta bring the floaty. <laughs> I highly recommend the floaty. Put the baby in the floaty, and you hang out at the pool. Mm -hmm. I mean, we put her in there. She was playing in the water. I'm off swimming. I was always in arm's reach. I wasn't like completely leaving her in the pool unattended. But it's just easy because I've been in the pool holding her and that gets old really quickly, Mm -hmm. you know, but putting her in the flow, she's secure. She's enjoying the water, you know, looking at everything. They have the little sun visor, get it from Amazon. Um, Don't take it Mm -hmm. out of the pack. Um, Buy a little pump, which I did. I bought a mini pump um yep mm-hmm. that's it that's actually the exact one i got uh only pink we have the same <laughs> one too we got the pink one yep yeah and um and i would say for this floaty make sure you get the little bubbles on the back that prevents the flipping because some of the older models of this brand do flip on you so just make sure they got the little bulbs on the back that prevents her from um 
I guess, top sizing. And uh, what else? Some uh, stroller. Now, half the mommies in the group brought their big stroller. Um, other half, I guess, we're, we bought stro a new stroller because my big stroller is really, really big. It's just too big. Um, but the new stroller is a summer infant stroller. It's $99 from summer infant. When I tell you that thing folds easy, you flick it, it opens, it's a carrying strap on. I look like a boss mom flipping that thing, mm -hmm. putting it on my show. Let's go, y'all, with my little $60 classy. <laughs> we were out of there. Like it was great. Um, bath time real quick, uh, inflatable tub. I was not about trying to clean out a tub. I mean, normally I spray everything down with Lysol anyway. And when I go to, when I stay in a hotel room, so that goes without saying, but the inflatable tub was nice because I kept it inflated and the little jacuzzi thing they had in the room. I just kept it over in there. Every night she got, you know, a bath in there and I knew it was fine. I left that dog on thing in the room we left and that's it. I mean, it's inexpensive that I didn't feel bad with leaving it. So those are, I would say my top, top tips. There were some other little things too, but I, I you know, just a pump, I still have that pump that will travel with me the next time we go on vacation. It went, it went nice. I, I mean, I had a great time. My baby, um, just to be cute, I gave her a pina colada for the first time. Of course, not with rum, but um, well, she saw me. <laughs> I know she went to sleep. She, she, she went to sleep good on vacation. She, she was out. That baby, it wasn't no. Goes out too, <laughs> but yeah, that those those are the major ones that I really think that other mothers will find useful. So thank you. Um, I want to show just a really quickly. Cherie talked about the Montessori cube, so I wanted to show what she was talking about, so our moms could see. A lot of our little littles have um, this Montessori cube. It's just something to keep little hands busy. So they clicking and twisting and all that kind of stuff on a something that they can't like take the pieces off of and throw um and i will say we keep this in the car now mm -hmm. because it's something to just give to her she plays with it a little bit and she throws it now she's in the throwing phase so she throws everything yeah, they but throw. they throw everything and then the disposable mats um which we got hit to because chick-fil-a shout out to chick-fil-a but these little mats they come in a pack of like 40 and you just take it out you stick it, it has tape on the different corners and you just tape, tape it to the table. And so you can pour out their French fries or whatever on the mat and it keeps yep. them from getting it all over the table. So and that stays all of those in my bag. In the chat. Yeah, Angie, that stays in the bag. I know you just went out to dinner. That tape, sticky mat, that's all I use now for her. When we go out to dinner at a restaurant, I, I, it stays in the bag. Like I have but you know what's up. funny about that? I'm glad you said that because I literally last night, because we haven't been out a lot since we started potty training. And last night when we were getting ready to leave, I was like, in my mind, I was thinking I wouldn't have to carry that much and we don't carry a baby bag per se anymore. But I'm like, I felt like the bag was jam packed when I left my, my toe. <laughs> so I have to really like figure out what my new baby bag is or what it mm -hmm. looks like or what I need to carry with me or what needs to stay home so mm -hmm. yeah I think I'm you know probably what, Angie, gonna... you just uh, made me remember something that I really want to say quickly about what to carry and uh, so I've read this on a blog you know how in our baby bags or probably the rest of us with our baby bags we have stuff everywhere in the baby at least I do have I used to anyway have stuff mm -hmm. everywhere so I will carry my big bag cute little bag right and the stuff is everywhere so I'm in the room changing the bathroom somewhere out in public changing her I'm like looking in the bag for this looking in the bag for that right you made the pro tip and, and it's kind of ghetto. You put the little, everything in a Ziploc bag. So her mm -hmm. butt cream, two diapers, her um, pad. I use the, the pee pads um, and uh, pot, whatever you use 
immediately need to change right. not special mm-hmm. changes not blowout right. changes but right. regular changes right. and you put that in there I was able to just take that gallon bag out of my diaper bag um go in. into the airplane yeah. bathroom the little small airplane bathroom changed her like a pro like I was so mm-hmm. proud of myself y'all changing yeah like, mm-hmm. you Sheree not we the right. one that be breaking sweats with changes yes mm-hmm. I was sweating <laughs> Waiting to go in the bathroom, right? But you did it. But you did it. But you did it. But you did it. It's efficient. Yeah. 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 So we are going to shift gears again and go really quickly to um, another DIY for for birthday parties and stuff because we, you know, we balling on the budget with these birthday. It's expensive for birthday Mm -hmm. parties when you can yourself or when you got a mother rouse in your group that could do it for you but we're not gonna go yeah <laughs> we're, we're not doing this we're not no doing this. we're going to uh nick and nick is going to tell us how to diy on a budget uh your kid's birthday party give it to us nick what you got so we have a winter birthday it's in december so we can't just do a good old cookout and throw some balls out in the yard and put on the hose um, and I just thought of it, although we had so much fun at my gym. Um, it's kind of like a DIY my gym, which is what we ended up having to do for my son's birthday party. So the theme was let's have a ball or like something like that, something like that. But there were just balls everywhere. So Facebook Marketplace, like Facebook Marketplace. I got kitty pools off of Amazon <laughs> and um, I got like people who had old ball pits and stuff like that off of Facebook marketplace. I put them in my bathtub with hot water and bleach and Lysol and cleaned all of them up, left them outside to dry. We got um, like the plastic slides, like the toy slides. We got those off of Facebook marketplace, Um, like everything. So we pretty much got one of everything. If you want a seesaw, go on Facebook marketplace. If you want a slide, if you want uh, inflatable if you want a trampoline the little mini trampoline anything you want because number one if it is your own stuff you kind of don't want to put it out for the party and then kids ruin it or break it and that was your kids personal stuff that they use and they play with at home or you get all this stuff and then you can after the party you can take it and put it back on Facebook marketplace and sell it to somebody else or keep it and like when your friends and their kids have birthday parties pull it out and let them use it either for free or tell them, hey, I'll, $20, I'll let you take this. And because no one wants to buy this stuff anyway, unless you have a somewhere to put it. So mm-hmm. I keep it in my basement. Like when I do somebody's hair sometimes and their kids come over, I put out a ball pit. Like we blow up the inflatable pool and I put the balls out and the kids can ruin the basement. Like I don't care. It doesn't matter. That's easy enough for me to clean up. And it's not something that they play with on a regular day. So just, I would just say birthday parties, especially a winter birthday party, or even the ones outside, like water tables, go on Facebook Marketplace, or like see who your neighbors, does anybody have this stuff that you can use for one day for one birthday party? Don't go crazy and buy all this stuff brand new, or -hmm. feel like you have to go somewhere and spend a whole lot of money or have your guests pay money. You can probably set it up like yourself in the house just blowing up balloons and throwing them on the floor like you don't even need helium throw them on the floor let the kids kick around balloons like they don't care they don't care as much as we care so when it comes to birthday parties I would say especially when they're young your money's going to go towards food because it's mostly going to be adults it's going to be aunties uncles grandparents your best friends so if you're going to spend money and you don't want to cook for the party especially an indoor party where we can't just cook out as easily that's where your money's going to go is to food um party favors think smart about party favors too these are kids like you don't have to have a gift bag with tons of crazy stuff in it or candy my son's birthday party I told y'all it was ball theme I gave away a big bouncy ball like that was it every kid got a big old ball to take home and it was fine for babies all the way up to like the 10 year olds who were leaving everyone left with a big bouncy ball so just you know work smarter not harder for the birthday parties and just make sure you can actually play with your kid. You're not so distracted and get tons of pictures. And then when it's time to clean up, tell people to take stuff home. Tell people, you know, take pictures, put it on Facebook or throw it away because you didn't spend that much money anyway. See, see, 
everything is DIY. I'm just starting to use Facebook Marketplace. So um, who knew? Y'all do, but I didn't know. So that's why I, I say that. It's funny because know. the very water table that another one of our mommies had at a birthday party that we all were at, Rory has the same water table. So another mommy that was at the party was excited because her son lived at the water table at the party. She went and ordered it and was like, oh my God, I didn't realize how many pieces it was. I was like, well, I got mine for Facebook Marketplace. It was already put together. I ain't. Mm-hmm. Hey, that's good too. Yes, that's. I had to put it together. And I saw with some bleach. I got it. Hose. I read the reviews, hose and it's like a hundred pieces. Yeah, I have to worry about it. It was already done. I was in Costco today, thinking the the pool stuff and the summer stuff would be on sale. It's not. The water table was still fifty dollars. And I'm like, wow. you could go on Facebook. It's already put together. It's probably been in someone's backyard for a little bit. But yeah. go out there with your hose, hose it down. Get the um, what's the yellow spray? The awesome spray. Yeah, that, that from dollar the dollar tree. store. Yes. yes. I sprayed it down with awesome yeah. and I let it sit for an hour. And then I went with thank God for a detailing husband, his power wash, and we sprayed that water table off and it looked mm-hmm. brand new. Yeah. Mm-hmm. $40 and it was a $130 water table. And when yeah. Rory's done, sell it for 20. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. Yeah. Make some money off of it. I mm-hmm. I mean, that's, 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 I, if you could get stuff and just resell it, there are people looking for everything, mm-hmm. everything. We give a lot of stuff away amongst ourselves in the right. village, but whatever we don't give away, we definitely will sell because somebody else need it. We don't mm-hmm. need it. And these kids always need shoes. So you sell it and you use it for something. Else. If you got Target Circle, DIY. If mm-hmm. you buy anything, Cat and Jack. Buy all this stuff, Cat and Jack. Shoes, clothes, whatever. Yep. Because you can take it back when they can't fit it. Just yep. throwing that out there. Take it back. You don't even have to beat it. They can't fit it. Right back in August, I bought, uh, well, I'm not going to say that. I bought her some Cat and Jack tennis shoes. And I didn't lie. They were very hard to put on. So I went in the app and I said, um, item not as described because they Mm -hmm. were not slip on. Mm -hmm. My money got refunded to my debit card immediately. $18. Mm -hmm. And guess what those shoes are? Downstairs at the door in the basket because we ain't going to wear them no more because it takes 20 minutes to put them on. And I'm not going to break a sweat to put no shoes on. Go get your Crocs. Cat Jack can go back. (laughs) For the moms that's balling on a little bit of a bigger budget, anything that you buy in Nordstrom's, you can take back when they can't fit anymore. So some of this stuff, I'm very strategic now. I'll give away stuff. It's not going to be Cat and Jack because we just yep. going to get a bigger size. Exactly. But um, we're going to give away everything Period. else. So um, again, get your money sure. back when you can, huh? If you bought like the baby shoes, uh, the Sea Cow Run shoes from Nordstrom, you can take those back. You can take whatever you bought from Nordstrom's back. Mm-hmm. Uh, another mommy, about? another mommy was on here with us the other day, and she said a lady returned shoes. They looked like she had had them for ten years, and because they sold them in the store, they took them back, no receipt. Them back. Oh, wow. Okay. No- yeah, I'm Thank just you. throwing that out there so people can get their money back. So it's, it's ten, I know, right? It's 10.05. We are going to say goodnight to our viewing audience. Um, we'll be back here next week. We're going to continue with our post uh, our fourth trimester series. We're going to be on part three, returning to work. A lot of our mommies are dealing with that right now. How do you go back to work? How do you work from home? What does that look like with breastfeeding? Um, We had a mom that said her milk supply kind of decreased a little bit when she just went back to work. Is it going to stay that way? How do we boost it? All of that stuff. So we're going to talk about that next week. So we will see you all back here next week. Thank you for joining us tonight um, or re-watching this however you do it. Don't forget to like and share our page. Refer your friends that are pregnant, that um, need a village and doula services. We're here to support everybody. Um, Have a good night and we will see you all on the flip side.